Today we have got you a vlog from the blogs of AVP Trust Senior Secondary School CBSE Tirupur for our school e-magazine Free Days. Different people bring out different aspects of their personalities. Personalities are not born, they are forged. One such great personality is our guest today, whose social works are so inspiring and who is master of so many works like he is a wildlife photographer, he is a bird educator, a successful businessman, president of Nature Society of Tirpur, state chairperson, uh, chairman of Educate the Girl Child and uh, state chairperson of uh, Interact Club of uh, Rotary, uh, Rotary Club. So the guest is none other than Mr. Rotarian K. Ravindran sir, who is president of Nature Society of Tirpur. Here we go. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming here. Welcome. We feel very honored to have you as a guest and we hope uh, we and our uh, viewers will get inspired by your words. And before we start the interview, we would like to know how do you feel interviewed by our uh, students? Yeah, this has been a very interesting moment in my life, being interviewed uh, by school students and about my uh, career and my journey in uh, wildlife conservation. I really welcome it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, with your permission, can we start the interview, sir? Yeah, sure. So, our first question is, when was the first time when you got inspired to do something for the nature and how did you start, sir? Right, okay. There is no one uh, particular moment which inspired me into the conservation concept. Actually, it's a long story. I started my life as a photographer. In my early days, I was just carrying camera whenever we travel. So I started taking some uh, birds, mammals, and some of those photographs and once and when I came to know about the name of the birds, it was like quite very new for me because in our the common man who knows uh, every bird as a know, like in Tamil you call it Kaka Kurumi, Kokunara, you just uh, confine everything under this vortex. But when I came to know about the specific name of the birds, I, I thought it was there was something interesting in it. So with the guidance of a uh, few of my friends. After my uh, you know, uh, shifting uh, from Bangalore to Tirpur, I met a few of the friends here who are very, very much connected to uh, nature. And there was an organization called uh, Natural History Trust, wherein uh, we had some mentors there. Uh, one Mr. Mohammad Ali, who is a research scientist. And uh, he was, you know, uh, traveling with him for four years. He taught us a lot about uh, the uh, importance of nature and uh, how it helps human beings to thrive in this world. Uh, starting from the history of this world. So we thought, you know, it was a real new subject for us because after doing the schooling and college life, uh, you know, the real material, uh, you know, is behind this uh, earth. The earth thing, we all call this uh, the mother earth. So we thought, you know, uh, we, we could see, uh, literally we could see, uh, when the years passed by, uh, the number of birds, animals are declining. You all know that. Uh, so obvious. So, and uh, even the places where we have visited in the past uh, for uh, bird watching or for just a leisure, they are uh, very, uh, at a very uh, fast rate, they are all getting peculiar. So, we are losing all those places. So, it gives you a thought. So, there is some bird in this world, and suddenly after 10 years, you are not able to, to see the bird that gives you a concern. So, there comes the concept. That is why after uh, starting this nature society of Tirpur, we framed our motto very simply. First thing, you know, observe the nature. Second, definitely you going to enjoy the nature. And comes the conservation part, conserve the nature. So once you start enjoying something, and if you feel you are going to miss it very soon, definitely the thought, the thought will come to your mind that you have to conserve it in any cost, any cost. So that's how, you know, uh, and then uh, we, uh, we decided to uh, pass on this message to the next generation, you uh, and the younger generation people are uh, the future of this uh, uh, planet. So we wanted to uh, pass on these thoughts to you and we started, you know, all our uh, awareness programs, our campaigns among the school and college students. So that's really important actually in terms of the nature. That's so great to know, sir. I hope everyone uh, starts loving the nature so then they can understand the importance of nature. Exactly. Sir, 
Yeah, exactly. You know, I, as I told you, you know, I started uh, loving nature through the lens photography. It is one way of you know observing the nature through the lens. Uh, you know, photography it gives you uh, immense pleasure. Like right? you know, you can preserve the photographs uh, for years, and uh, that will tell about your uh, travel over the period. So I started uh, photographing birds, and then you know it took me to a lot of places to travel. If you want to uh, see uh, new birds, new species, as I would say, you know, in India itself we have almost uh, 1,300 species of birds. I have covered only 300 so far, 300 and all species so far. So even to cover this 300 species, what has uh, driven me is that you know to uh, run from places. Even tomorrow I have a plan to travel almost five hours uh, to see some special species of birds. So it gives you, uh, you know a new way of life actually. You can call it as a passion. Even better, you may call it as a way of your life. Um, it, it serves as a you know, stress buster also. Uh, you know about the business uh, in Tirupur is very hectic. The export business itself is very hectic, uh, whatever the size of the business be. Uh, and you know, uh, people you know they have they have their own ways of you know, uh, you know releasing their stress. Few people go for movies, and some folk go, go for recreation and all those things and. What I have chosen is you know bird watching and photography. So that really you know releases your stress. Every morning, you know, early morning you go out uh, to a uh, small water body or a uh, small little uh, ticket forest. You know, the, uh, the, you know what you call the, uh, like, you know you have to be patient there anyhow. Two three hours wait, you know, will give you uh, big uh, satisfaction. That's what uh, we have been following. Photography, yes, you know, it is, uh, these days it has become really expensive. In those old days, we had the uh, you know, film cameras, not so expensive, but uh, the uh, digital uh, age has brought up a uh, lot of digital cameras and the use of printed cameras. Uh, but um, like for a student, yes, of course, you can start with a basic camera, uh, not to burden your uh, parents' pockets also. You can start with a small basic camera and start photographing first. Uh, what it gives you, you know, it gives you more opportunity to, you know, analyze of uh, the uh, objects that you are going to shoot, either be birds or insects or uh, butterflies or mammals. It will be a good record. So photography is one good tool uh, that uh, will lead uh, to a naturalist way of life. So definitely you can pursue uh, photography. Uh, I'm not a good photographer to be precise, you know. A photographer or another one, other people may think that, you know, even though I'm a wildlife photographer, I'm not too technical in photography like how many people shoot in the studios. It is not necessary even. So, uh, just wildlife photography is very simple. These days, uh, the digital cameras are there, the auto uh, uh, focus cameras are there. It's very easy uh, to handle the cameras also. And uh, only thing you have to select your subject, select your uh, place. That is more important. So, you have to be, will be very going very close uh, to nature when you start the wildlife photography. I welcome students uh, for photography, but before photography, what I will suggest them is that you know they buy a binocular. That is more important. As I told you, observation of nature is more important. So uh, through the binoculars, you know, um, rather than uh, looking at the bird through the naked eyes, if you look through a binocular, you know, uh, it magnifies its beauty. So we start with a binocular. It's not so expensive, and then you can definitely go on for a digital camera with a small budget. Definitely, you know, you will get you know, closer and closer to nature. Right. So, we can say like photography gives us more knowledge and uh, it is a way of beauty of nature. Yeah, it will take you to nature. This question is that, was there any stressful scenario in your past and if so, how did you push through those hard times? You mean in uh, wildlife or photography, conservation? Any, any times in your life or any hard times in your face? Yeah, going back to my previous answer, uh, what I referred was that, you know, pursuing uh, this uh, wildlife conservation or photography or bird watching, it is a stress buster. Definitely it is not going to give you any stress, any form of stress. It is going to release your stress. So uh, I think you can correct your question maybe, it is a stress buster. So, uh, so far, I have not undergone any stress uh, for Have you been in any other business, sir? Uh, that is different. That is totally different. 
uh, with regard to the wildlife and uh, nature conservation, definitely no. But life is always, you know, has challenges in every form. Um, with regard to family, business, uh, anything apart from you know, nature, uh, all it's all uh, man-made, is it not? So whatever is in nature is a stress buster. Whatever is not in nature, that is artificial, uh, uh, like you know the family that you build or uh, the business that you develop, grow, wherever you go you have some stress definitely. The amount may vary, but uh, for me, uh, I've not taken the stress into my mind, definitely no. Um, I don't know how I practice this, but still, you know, uh, since I'm uh, traveling uh, with nature for uh, quite a long time, uh, I don't uh, take it into my mind. It will be there, it will be definitely be there if you run a business like, you know, like garment business in Playboard, but there are people, the whole industry, the whole uh, set of subordinates, they are going to give you a very hard time. But uh, you can take uh, life as it comes, don't take it to your head. Definitely you won't be the stress. Stress means you know you uh, shorten your lifetime actually. A little bit of stress is okay. I've, uh, what, what I've learned is that you know, uh, totally stress free cannot be possible. A little bit of stress will give you some motivation in order to perform more. But too much of stress definitely will uh, shorten your lifetime. Certainly, because like many people around here will be searching for stress buster. I mean, they'll be uh, around in surrounding here. They may they not are. know their uh, you know, ways to uh, release the stress. But uh, so when when they are, nature is so very good ways. Exactly. Few people, very few people know about this. This is actually a secret. So which is, I know I'm conveying to uh, uh, the students and the maximum number of people I wanted to do it in my lifetime. Yes, so, how do you organize your time as a, as you have to balance a, a professional, social work and also the family? It's a very difficult question actually. Everyone asks me the same question. Uh, you know, uh, like time is the same for everyone. It's 24 hours for all of you, uh, including me. Uh, but you know, uh, it is an art to balance everything, you know. Uh, like, you know, I do the uh, bird watching or whatever, my uh, work related to photography, I do it in the early hours. You get up early. The one way you buy time. So, like, instead of wasting time, you buy time by you know, getting up early in uh, every day. So, that way. And uh, during my lunch time, you know, uh, in the afternoon hours, uh, there will be a little bit of a slowness in the work and no one will be disturbing me, so I take this time, I take this opportunity to do my awareness programs, to meet the students and all those things. And um, I don't rest, okay, um, uh, like you know, the Sundays are the most busiest of my days. First starts, it starts with a bird watching session, and do my uh, post processing the, the photographs that I have uh, collected, and, uh, and the rest of the day is with the family. And uh, I'm really blessed uh, to have uh, my office and uh, my uh, residence in the same campus so that you know anytime I'm at work, anytime I'm at home. So that is one uh, blessing in disguise that I have got so that you know I can manage uh, family, business and the social activities. So we should have a schedule in our life or we should just uh, use the time properly not waste the time. Whatever things we have to do, we just do it in the, in the uh, present, not postpone it to the next day. Exactly. If you do not postpone your work, you want to do something, you have to do it. And uh, plan your work accordingly. The, uh, everyone would, uh, normally you would have seen uh, school students, you know, uh, taking a lame excuse. If the student teacher asks the student, why are you late? Sir, I am late, sir. That would be the, the most common answer that we have. Uh, Descend or uh, came across. Uh, time is, as I told you, know, everyone has the same time, you know, 24 hours. We want to go to a place at 2 o'clock. If we have an appointment at 2 o'clock, we have to be at uh, uh, 2 minutes before 2 o'clock. We should not go 2 minutes later than 2 o'clock. So, you have to plan the time of starting from your place. So, it, uh, you know, it's all complete planning that, you know, uh, to uh, meet the, uh, your uh, schedules, time schedules, everything. So plan accordingly, plan properly so that you know you don't miss anything in life. So, yes, so my next question is, uh, recently we have come to know that uh, you had a meeting with our chief minister yes. regarding 
So what makes you unique? The question is very simple, but I don't know how to answer this. See, uh, I can't say that I am being unique. Maybe you know our team, the whole Nature Society of the Cook team, calls ourselves, you know, the critical view of the Cook. Uh, you know, almost the Cook district uh, has a population of around 10 lakh people. And uh, for you, we, you, know, you know very well that, you know, uh, people who are really concerned about nature, conservation, someone who cares for the and that, someone who cares for the injured birds, and if you take a list of it, definitely it will be very handy. That, you know, I can probably say that uh, we members of Nature of the Pilpun, we are only 15 in number, so we can call ourselves definitely a critical view because out of the 10 lakh people, 15 of us, are uh, you know, thriving here in Tirupur. So, uh, you know, that way maybe we are unique as a team. I cannot say I am. We are unique uh, when considered about uh, conservation and nature. It's more important, it's more relevant actually. Uh, making money, uh, being, a, being a Rotarian also gives me pride, but you know, making money as a businessman, being a Rotarian, a social worker, and everything is important in life. But even beyond that, when uh, you are doing something, when others are not doing, then comes the question of the uniqueness. Maybe you can say that way we are unique with critical view of the uh, people. So soon we will get, we youth will surely do something for the nature research. You soon will get so many members. All the support of all the people of the school and students will get that. This question is that, uh, can you please tell any of your proudest moments in life? Very proud, very happy and proud of myself. About myself, feeling proud about myself, you have to go a long way, actually, uh, miles and miles to go. Um, feeling proud for one moment, uh, I cannot specify a single moment actually. It has come in uh, bits and pieces. Like, you know, uh, when I became a father of a girl child, I was proud. And if, uh, when I had the another girl child, I was too proud. So these are all the part and partial of life, which gives you some uh, pride. And uh, when, uh, you know, uh, we are recognized, we are being recognized among uh, a lot of people uh, that, you know, as I told you, we are very uniquely we are uh, caring for nature and someone you know represents you, someone who refers you and uh, your name among the crowd, that gives a small uh, uh, pride uh, when someone is referring. Uh, every small uh, things you know happening around you definitely gives you pride. And uh, like you know it is not necessary that you know you are going to lift the World Cup and then you become very proud of it. It's not necessary. Every small thing in your life that you face, any small small recognition uh, that someone, you know, uh, uh, is uh, uh, praising you, definitely will give you some pride. Um, yes, we are waiting for uh, more uh, proud moments uh, in all sectors, in business, in family, uh, then in uh, poetry, uh, social activities, and then in the Chetra City of Kirpur, we are waiting for more proud moments to come. Every moment, you know, it gives you pride when you enjoy doing what you are doing. What is your message to the students as a president of Nature Society of Tirpur and as a mentor program? There are two classes now here, yeah, yes. Nature Society of Tirpur. Definitely, you know, uh, uh, I keep meeting students. Uh, I should have told you earlier that, you know, it is my uh, ambition to meet as many number of students as possible in the lifetime. So far, you know, I have done uh, 250 plus awareness programs with slideshows and uh, you know, nature talks. So uh, every program, 50 members, 200 members, 500 members, I don't know. Uh, I made a count, uh, approximately around 70,000 to 1 lakh students have been so far. So uh, whenever uh, we are meeting, we are conveying the message to uh, conserve the nature. So uh, when you say conservation of nature, in the first place, definitely it is going to be a very big uh, subject and uh, like you know, uh, directly going to the final year of a college. So uh, we teach them, we show them the way, the steps 
to approach the nature. As I told you, we have a friend or motor like this, observe the nature, then definitely you will enjoy the nature, and then the thought will come to your mind that you are about to conserve the nature. So, step by step. So, I uh, speak to the students, I introduce nature. The most uh, nearest available kind of nature, wildlife, is the birds. Very simple. You know, if you want to see the birds, it's not necessary that you should travel to Vedantanga. What I would say is that, you know, open your windows, open your door, you can see the birds. The nature is there in front of you. So, I, we just guide the students to observe the nature, come into the nature. We, we, we want them to open their inner eyes. In Tamil, they would say, you know, precisely, you can say, just observe the nature. So that is what uh, I want to tell the uh, students because it's very important. Important that you should learn the history of this world. Everyone learns the history of India, the past history of India, who ruled India, who uh, fought with whom, and all those things. Beyond that, uh, wherever I go, I put this question to the students. I first ask them what is the history of this world, what is the age of this world, this earth. And uh, definitely, I think you know, it is not included uh, yet in the uh, academic curriculum. So, uh, I tell them first to understand nature. And understanding nature also, I put them two scales, two measuring scales, with which only you should, uh, you can understand nature. That is more important. One is scientific temper, the scientific output, and num number two is the rationalistic approach. Without, without uh, these two scales, definitely you cannot understand nature in the truest of its sense. Because you've got a lot of uh, misbeliefs, uh, you know, all blind faiths among you. That is inside your uh, blood, in your DNA. It has been transmitted to you by your forefathers. Always, you know, speak about, we are speaking about forefathers, your grandfather told this, that. We have a lot of mysteries, you know, blind faiths uh, regarding nature. So to, first you have to break the ties. You have to break the you know, blind faiths, only then you can understand the nature. So we uh, tell the students, I interest the students in each and every program that you know you should have two scales with you. One is the scientific temper, scientific output, and rationalistic approach. What is scientific output? What does science say? It leads to always. Uh, you know, ask so many questions. Only after we, you know, experimented and inference is taken and you know you take a decision of that. Hundred of hundred times it has to be true. So science you know ask so many questions. Two is rationalistic approach, you know, you have to analyze uh, something you know told by someone. You should not believe that someone has told you and you have to believe blindly. You can analyze whether it is true or not. Will it be uh, okay for me or not? Will it be you know beneficial to someone or not? So you have to analyze things. Only with these two tools if you approach the nature, you can understand it better and only then you can answer it. Otherwise, you know, for the blind face. Let me tell you an example. If I ask a student, yeah, an owl, an owl, is it a good scent or a bad scent? Definitely, you would say it's a bad scent because it has been uh, told by their forefathers or whomever it is, you know, owl cannot sit on their house. Number two, I would ask them, owls are hunting at night. I would ask why they are preferring to hunt at night. Without hesitating, each and every one inside the hall to say what did they say? Because they hunt, they don't hunt in the daytime because they sleep at the gate. They don't have sight, eyesight in the daytime. Yes or no? So this is not uh, something you know which is not scientific at all. So that is why you have to have a scientific temper. Only then you will come to know that you know owls, owls can see much better in the daytime, but they prefer hunting at the night for a scientific reason, for a you know brilliant reason. When the mammals they are uh, prey, the, the rats and rodents are a little slow, and they could not see properly at night. These owls go out. Uh, so there is a science behind everything. So if you don't have this scientific temper or this rationalism, the questioning, you still keep believing that you know owls does not have the eyesight in the daytime, and the people are looking at the air. Is it not? So this is one small example that I'm telling you. So if you believe they are being used, uh, believe in their old uh, blind faiths and all those things, definitely you cannot understand nature properly. One, then how will you conserve the nature? Feeding a crop every day, you are feeding the crop in the morning, in the afternoon, you feed them breakfast. It is against the nature that one should know. So I just keep telling the students that you know, 
you have to follow two rules one is scientific temper number two is rationalistic of course only then you can understand that so this is we strongly believe in these two that is more important I think I have answered your question. Am I right or do you have any other questions? Sir, what can we students be not financially independent from each other? Sorry to interrupt, I think I have not answered your second part. What is uh, your advice to students on entrepreneurship? That, uh, you know, talking about nature, I was very loved at. But coming back to the business, entrepreneurship, I would say it's short, very short. You have to dedicate yourself to whatever you are doing. You have to love your job, however small it is, however big it is. You have to love your job. Number two, hard work never fails. That is what is written on your back. I mean, behind you. Can take a look. Hard work works. So hard work, dedication, and love towards your uh, work, your uh, profession, whatever profession it may be. Maybe you are teaching as a profession. Or you are doing some business, or you are working for someone. You love your job. Definitely, you know, you will succeed. Sir, what can we as students who are not financially independent take some small steps to conserve nature, sir? Are there any uh, steps to be done by us? Can we do something for the nature in this region? Exactly. See, conservation of nature is not a very big thing. A contribution, a small amount of contribution from an individual, definitely can amount to a Big change, like you know, you can start the conservation from your home. Very simple. But you might know this. You would have heard about this several times, hundred times. You know, conserving the natural resources itself. You know, you are conserving nature. Like take for example, water. Water is so precious. No one can produce water. You cannot manufacture water. So when you conserve the water, like while you are brushing, while you are bathing, if you conserve water a little bit, definitely you are contributing. It is not that you know you all join hands in one place that you are going to lift, uplift the uh, you know goodness of nature. It is not necessary. Each and everything that you contribute in a small way definitely is going to help the conservation of nature. Like, you know, as a school student, I, uh, I keep on telling the students that like, you know when you are using uh, your stationery, like you know paper, your uh, notebooks, you can use it very wisely. You can use both sides of the paper. So using one side, you can use the uh, unused sheets of the notebooks. At the end of the year, you can make uh, bind a bound notebook for the next year. Lot of things. These are all very small from your place, from your house, from your level. And as a student, definitely you can contribute to the conservation. And uh, when you grow up, definitely, uh, you know, as a stepping as a stepping stone, when you learn all these things. And you once you start uh, observing the birds, animals, and the way of life, their behavior, everything. Definitely, you will have more ideas because the younger generation have, uh, you know, they are, uh, you know, they, uh, they are, you know, their level of thinking, their ideas are far better than uh, our uh, old age people. Every generation, you know, they are excelling in their uh, thought process. So definitely, you will have more ideas to conserve the nature once you observe, start observing the nature. Sir, will try our best uh, that we and our viewers will uh, take out many steps to conserve nature, sir. Okay, thank you. Sir, so last so many works that you have, businessman, uh, conserve nature, you work for conserving nature, you do so many such works. So, which among these works do you love the most, sir? I don't discriminate between my work, actually, as I told you. Uh, I love whatever I do, be it uh, my uh, work in office, my photography or uh, conservation or you know as a bird educator meeting students i do i i love everything i do so uh, i don't i don't hate anything <laughs> i do i cannot discriminate between these all these my work i uh, love whatever i do so i enjoy my classes yes, thank you sir thank you so thank you so much sir for giving us time in your busy and busy schedules as you do so much work but yet you gave us time uh, bringing a new work and for sure we'll uh, follow we and our viewers both will follow all your tips given and uh, once if we start enjoying the nature we will start conserving the nature is the thing which we are doing today thank you so much for coming here sir thank you so so oh thank you thank you very much i'm so pleased that you know i had an opportunity to share all my uh, thoughts uh, with the uh, students young generation people 
definitely you would have taken some tips from uh, whatever I am told uh, that would be good for the nature and the future. Thank you very much for coming here. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Most welcome.